In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the MailChimp GDPR compliance tools that they built for us. It's going to involve adding stuff to your opt-in forms, how to find people in your MailChimp account, and how to erase all of their data if they ask for that. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, and you like WordPress tips and tricks and hacks and getting better at WordPress, click on the subscribe button now, and then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And after that, check out our private Facebook group. There's a link in the description down below. And it's all about WordPress, helping each other, getting better, chatting, whatever. Just all about WordPress. And with that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. So I'm logged into MailChimp already. And the first thing I'm going to do is head over to lists. And on the list page, there's going to be a bunch of lists, which are going to contain all the emails that you've collected over the years or over the months or over the weeks or whatever. And each one of these lists needs to be opted into the GDPR. And the GDPR functionality that MailChimp has included is basically some text and some checkboxes that allow you to categorize what people have chosen and what kind of information you're allowed to collect from them. So if you choose any list and click on this dropdown, then click on settings, and then click on list name and defaults, and then scroll down, you're gonna see an enable GDPR fields checkbox. Check on that, then scroll to the bottom and click on save list and campaign defaults. And now if you've embedded the form or any form in this list, from this list through JavaScript, it will automatically been updated with that content. If you do not do that, go to sign up forms and say the form builder, for example, let's open that. And now if we scroll down, we're gonna see a GDPR section. Everything that's highlighted in this salmon colored and with the orange border, that would not have been there had we not selected that GDPR fields checkbox. And all this text is added into our form which will have the effect of lowering our conversion rate. And I just translated this form back to English from German, but I didn't translate these three entries here. Uh, but yours should be all in, all in English if your account is all in English. But if you click on this field, we have the editor on the right-hand side where we can edit the text in there. So all the text that we see can be edited. The stuff that MailChimp provides is just a template and it covers most use cases because the whole point is what you're supposed to tell people how you're using that information. So here it says, WP Learning Lab will use this information you provide uh, to stay in touch with you, give you updates, and do some marketing. And that's what it is. And these, when they're translated, this is email, this is uh, offline mail, and this is online advertising and rem remarketing. So if someone submits this form and checks just this box, that means they only want email. They check all three, they're okay with getting all three. And MailChimp has provided the functionality to allow you to segment people based on what they chose, so you treat them all differently. So if you've been segmenting already, say you segment people who bought the red widget on your website, now that red widget segment is gonna have three additional sub-segments, which are, yes, you can email me, yes, you can offline mail me, and yes, you can online add me. Or, you can remove these. So if you don't do any offline mail, just remove that checkbox. And if you don't do any online advertising, you can take that checkbox out too. But chances are you do do email, you do do. Otherwise you wouldn't have this form. So you probably do email. So change that text and the options as you need to and place a copy of this information onto your privacy policy so that people know what you're collecting information for and why. So that's the first step. Now your forms are more or less GDPR compliant. What you should also do is have people reconfirm that they want to be on your list. To do that, you basically just send them an email. And MailChimp has given you a template, given all of us a template, in fact, which makes that a lot easier to do. So if we head over to lists again, sorry, if we go to campaigns instead, and then click on create a campaign, create an email, let's call it GDPR reconfirm, click on begin. I'm not gonna fill out these three fields. That's not the point for the GDPR, but under content, click on design email, click on themes, click on subscriber alerts. Yes, there's a lot of things to click on. 
but this is the two subscriber alerts that you can send out. GDPR one is this one here, and I didn't want to click on it actually. Let's see if I can go back. So I want to show you the other alert and tell you something funny about it. And I'm messing this up royally. Let's try that again. Themes, subscriber alerts. All right, let's hit the preview one. So here we have what this alert is. And this is the template. You can update this to whatever text you need, but it's just something MailChimp wants to give you to get you off on the right foot. And it's basically saying GDPR comes to effect. You have more control over your privacy. Update your settings by clicking on this button. And if you do this properly, you'll actually remove anybody who doesn't interact with the settings. Because under explicit consent, just ignoring it and not doing anything, that's not explicit consent. So technically, you should delete everybody from your list or create, no, that, that's a bad idea. Create a new list and then possibly have a new opt-in form or update settings that puts them onto the new list. And then everybody who doesn't migrate to the new list within a certain amount of time, say a week or two weeks, they're deleted from your account. That's good for GDPR, but that's also good for your delivery rate, which is also good for your spam rate, which is also, it, it's just good. It's housekeeping for your list. People don't want to be on there, take them off. It's better for your list. Now here's the funny thing I want to show you. In 2014, there is something that came out in Canada, so you may not have heard of it, called CASEL, Canadian Anti-Spam Law. And when this came into effect, there's a huge panic. And the fines, I believe, were $10 million per infraction. And that was for an individual. And for a business, it was $20 million per infraction. And basically this said that you need to have people double opt into your list, otherwise you're spamming them. And for every infraction, that means every person you have on your list who complains, who is not double opted in, you pay 10 or $20 million, which is just a ridiculous amount of money for that. But the reason it's funny is there's this huge panic in Canada over this. I was working for a tech company back then. They were making about $6 million a year. And there's just this huge panic because one infraction means almost a year, almost two years of their revenue goes to the Canadian government, which it didn't want to do. Actually, it was a business. So just one infraction would be almost four years of their revenue. So huge panic all around Canada. And since then, it's been almost four years, I haven't heard of a single case of anybody being fined. Not a single one. So maybe that's the effect they wanted. Maybe they just wanted people to get their junk in order and become a little more standardized and respect privacy a little more by double opting in. And that was the whole goal of it. Maybe, I don't know. But maybe that's the GDPR because I don't see how they're going to find anybody outside of the EU. Um, I don't see how, but maybe they will. I don't even know. The Canadian government didn't even find Canadians in Canada. So the, the, the GDPR may never lead to anything besides this current panic. Everybody getting their privacy policies updated, everybody getting their forms updated, everybody getting everything in order is this mad panic. And then they're not actually going to do anything. They're not actually going to find anybody. And everybody will think, oh, good. Whew, they missed me because I know I'm not 100% uh, covered because I didn't go to a lawyer. And I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know exactly what I'm doing. But for whatever reason, they didn't get me. But maybe they weren't getting anybody. Maybe this is just not a ploy, but just a way to kind of scare the internet to just becoming a little more respectful of privacy. Then they keep on finding the big companies where it's worthwhile. Either way, I digress. And here is the GDPR subscriber alert template. If you don't have a MailChimp account and you use a different email account, you can build in that um, the GDPR compliance checkboxes into forms. You can build that in any form builder. You can use this text in any form builder. You can actually just create a free MailChimp account and copy them. I don't recommend you do that, although I just told you that's an option because uh, MailChimp is great. MailChimp is a great email service. So if you don't have an email service yet and you want one, check out MailChimp. I also have a tutorial that I linked to up above, a little plug that shows you how to set up a MailChimp account. So the next thing we want to do is let's get out of here and go back to the dashboard. 
So those are two big things. We've updated our form to include checkboxes that uh, basically gives explicit consent for collecting certain things and for killing our conversion rate on those forms. And we've now sent out um, an email alerting people they have to resubscribe, which is great because now I, we have explicit consent of all the people who are already subscribed and we've killed our email list by that point. So now if there's anybody left on our email list, if they reach out to us and they wanna know what data we have on them, it's really straightforward. All you have to do is click on the magnifying glass and type in, go to contacts actually, type in an email address. So this one I'm pretty sure is in here. That's a demo. There it is right here. If we click on view profile, we see all the data we have about this contact. When they subscribed uh, and what they've done on our list. And there's even a GDPR option. Now, when someone signs up through the GDPR, uh, through, through those checkboxes I showed you earlier, they will actually have an update like this. So it's gonna have GDPR opted in and what boxes they checked and when they check them. Yeah, so that's it. So that would be here opted into say just email and the date that that happened. And here it says my location is Carl E. Nielsen Youth Park in the USA. I have no idea where that is. So if they're using my IP for to geolocate, that's a massive fail. So uh, that's a good thing though, because we don't want the GDPR or for GDPR, we don't want to be collecting IP addresses for geolocation anyway. And this is clearly wrong. So that's good. Uh, and then if we want, I believe we can export, yeah, we can export all the data and then we can send that data to the individual. And if they, there's a couple options at that point. So they get the information, which is part of the GDPR. They have to be able to request all the data you have on them. So you'd probably output all the information from WordPress. There's a tutorial up above that I've linked to for new WordPress 4.9.6 and beyond that allows you to export that data. Here you can export this data from MailChimp and send that to them as well. And if they want to just update their information, there is a link in every single templated email you send from MailChimp. It's called update settings or something like that and or mail settings. And if they click on that, they can update their mail settings. So they can update the information there or they can tell you what they want. And you can click edit on any one of these things and update their information. And if they want to delete their stuff, from your accounts, from your apps. Just click on delete right here and that will completely delete them from MailChimp. And then if they opt in again in the future, they go through the same process again, but at least at that point they'll be deleted and that's gonna be the end of the story for those people on your mailing list. So all of those things encompass what the GDPR requires of us, whether or not there's actually gonna be a huge amount of fines, we're gonna see because I'm fairly certain that there's a lot of people in the EU. There's a lot of people, a lot of EU citizens around the world. I'm fairly certain people from the EU are visiting pretty much every website on the planet. Is every website gonna be up to date on GDPR? Probably not. So it'll be interesting to see what happens May 25th and beyond, but my prediction is not much. There might be a couple of people who are fined just to set an example and scare everybody back in line. Uh, but even those fines may not go anywhere unless they're big, big companies like Google and Facebook, nothing is gonna happen, I think. I could be very wrong. I might be the first person who's fined. So that would be fantastic. Um, but either way, they wouldn't get a lot of money out of me. So it, if, I mean, if it would cost them more to have their legal department try to find me than it would that they'd actually get, than the actual money they'd get from me. So probably not worthwhile for them. But either way, by doing these things I'll show you in this video, your MailChimp account is gonna be much closer to compliance. I can't say for 100% if that's everything you need because I'm not a lawyer. If you need to be more accurate and be 100% sure, I recommend you contact a lawyer in your area and they should be able to guide you in the right direction, I hope. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the prior Facebook group and click one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.